nanotechnology and other technologies that are coming down the pike will, I am sure, put an end to material scarcity on this planet. We um, are burdened with a couple of unfortunate realities. One is we evolved from a common ancestor with the chimpanzees. And you look at chimpanzees and they have hierarchical social structures. They have definite top-down, there's status, there's who controls the females amongst the males who controls the access to food. This is in our genes. It's bred in our bones to be wanting to have more than those around us. It gives us a feeling of comfort and superiority and it provides a social structure. We're also burdened with this dismal science of economics which has driven so much of how we uh, interact as people. But economics has always hitherto been the science of scarcity. It's how you rationalize the distribution of scarce resources. What we're going to see a transition to is the science of abundance. Economics will become the art of what do you do when you have too much of everything instead of too little of everything. Nanotechnology is going to be one of the most amazing technologies of the 21st century. Uh, what radical nanotechnology is, is simply saying that recognizing that the formula for most things is pretty much the same. It's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, silicon, and nitrogen in various combinations. Those are the five elements that we use to make human beings and livestock and trees and, and uh, almost everything that we use in life. Now, who is going to resent that the most? The people who right now are in fact the most powerful. The ones, and why are they the most powerful? Because they have the most of the scarce material resources. Nobody who makes their living in the oil and gas industry wants us to get rid of digging up this limited, geographically isolated commodity, fossil fuels, and going instead to egalitarian sunshine that falls with equal brightness everywhere on the planet.